spore formation. This is the other type of a sexual reproduction. Now, a spore is a unicellular microscopic structure that is used for a sexual reproduction. It contains a nucleus and some cytoplasm. A spore may be produced through mitosis or, in some cases, even meiosis. Spores are usually small, light, and easily dispersed. They are produced in large numbers to increase the chances of landing on a surface favorable for germination. Spore formation occurs in organisms such as bacteria, protozoa, algae, mosses, ferns, and fungi. Now, we look at spore formation in rhizopus. Also known as mold. Now, the rhizopus is a group of saprophytic fungi that includes Rhizopa stolonifa. Rhizopa stolonifa. Now, Rhizopa stolonifa feeds on dead organic matter, such as the organic matter that is present on bread. So on this piece of bread, you can see molds. These molds of the Drezopa stolonifer. Now if you magnify that, you see that the body of the Drezopas is known as a mycelium. The mycelium consists of a network of branched filaments known as hyphae. Now, there are three types of hyphae. If you look at this mycelium, the, the whole of this, this is a mycelium. It's made up of a network of filaments known as the hyphae. Now, there are three types. You have the stolon which grows along the surface of the substratum. Rhizoids that grow into the substratum, that is the food material for anchorage and absorption. Then there is the sporangiophores. The sporangiophores these grow away from the substratum and bears spore-producing structures at their apex, known as the sporangium. So on the apex, there are spherical structures known as the sporangium that produce spores. You see, these are sporangium that has ruptured to release many spores. All these, these are spores. So this swelling, that is the sporangium, produces the spores. And uh, when it is mature, when the sporangium matures, it changes from gray to black due to the formation of spores within. When fully mature, the sporangium bursts, releasing the spores. Like this one there. Now each spore is unicellular and is carried by wind or water. So where the spores land, and if the substratum is conducive, the spores germinate and give rise to another mycelium.